Welcome back to The Breakfast. For those who are just joining us, you've missed out on a little bit, but there's still a lot of very big conversations to be had this morning here on PLOS TV Africa. Uh, a few hours ago, actually, we, of course, uh, there was uh, news of the burning of Sunday Igbo's house. And this is, uh, you know, of course, uh, after we've had conversations on his stance with regards headers in or your state and in the southwest, the southwest governors and the MATL had a meeting also yesterday and came to certain conclusions with regards, uh, you know, the uh, uh, grazing anti, you know, well, grazing in the southwest, um, underage grazing also, and um, rather um, headsmen in the southwest also. So um, we would be once again joined by Mr. Bulaho Lujide to share his thoughts on this, uh, you know, the story and uh, see what this really means. So welcome once again, Mr. Lujide. Oh, thanks for having me. All right. Um, so earlier we had spoken about um, the idea of this being a reprisal attack um, after, you know, the incidents that took place last uh, Friday. Um, so let's first of all get your thoughts on that. Um, mm -hmm. The possibility is that this may have occurred um, as a reprisal um, um, from Friday's um, incidents. It's not impossible, uh, but, but it's also too predictive uh, and that casts some doubt on whether it's actually a peer reprisal or it has some other complexities to it. Um, we're talking of a house in Ibadan. Ibadan is not in Kano, it's not in Goso, it's here in Ibadan, you know. And um, so for us to say, okay, because there were attacks on Fulani, so Fulani is ganged up and went to that same war house in Ibadan and burned it down, it's, it's not sounding really straightforward like that. I think there are some complexities um, around that. <clears throat> so let's be able to see what the police will come up with uh, on, on that investigation. Uh, that, that, that will be my first thought. <clears throat> it's also important to note that uh, Igboho himself is a fairly complex character. Um, uh, he, he is an enforcer who has also been involved with politics in a way. So there are several legs to his own play as a person. And you cannot even be too sure where, um, where the legs are out or where those things are, are coming from. So if you're an enforcer, it means you have rival enforcers. Enforcers is uh, they are, you know, sexy names for political folks. Um, you've been involved with politicians, so there are also politics at play. You see uh, politicians have been juggling over what is going on, who wants to take the shine, oh, we've been doing this, we've been doing that. So there are the political sides. So then there is the core matter, it's, uh, which is the invaders uh, in, in, in the Southwest, and which he has done um, something good, something that, you know, triggered the kind of reaction we are now beginning to see all of a sudden, as if they were not aware that all these things were happening before. You know, so it's, it's difficult to say exactly. It could be a reprisal. It could be. It could also not be. It could mm. be more complex. Okay. Um, Mr. Ademola Akimbola mentioned earlier on the press that you can't really trust the character of Sunday Igboho, you know, and even people have said that he might have been the one who did that. We have no claim, we have no uh, evidence for that, but these are just speculations. People are saying he could have been responsible for that, and it won't be the first time if he was responsible indeed. But he's come out to deny that. He said uh, there is no, he's also said denied being sponsored by any politician. But we see now that he's been tipped to head Amoteku. Governors disclosed to the cable newspapers that they were going to appoint him as head of Amoteko, but he's saying he has no interest in it. It also just seems very complex. Do, do you think this has any political undertone? There are, there are political intrigues in all of this. Um, and like I said, himself has served several gods uh, in the political space, uh, for that matter. It, it, Sunday, I think, in my opinion, has done, if, if you believe in the spirituals, has done what he has been spiritually led to do. He woke up the sleeping governors. They were sleeping, they were napping. You know, and he has woken them up by his own action. 
And now we are beginning to see meetings. We are beginning to see. Because, see, his approach, as crude as it may be, is what brought all these, to, these things to the fore. At the same time, we must recognize that that approach is crude. There's a, there's a headline in the papers today that says, Headers, Killer Headers Invades a Kitty Forest. So when you chase out criminals from Ondo Forest or from Barakwa Forest, do you bother where they go to next? So we, we won't be solving that problem by his kind of action. We need a more strategic, coordinated approach. Otherwise, you chase some Fulani 500 meters into the bush, they sit there, and then they look for the neighboring, and they say to, what have you done? Absolutely ineffective. But well, here we are today talking about those serious matters. And the reason is because Igboho triggered it. So um, the, the aspect of you know, the incident on Friday, um, it, it is also expected that there would be investigations. Yeah, I, I don't know how much faith you have in the Nigerian uh, police force you know, and their ability to investigate and bring those people to book because a crime was committed, regardless of what the emotions are. A, a crime was committed. That. I do not have uh, a, a, that confidence that we will get to the bottom of how that crime was committed. What will eventually happen is that you will see politicians fall over one another to rebuild the girl's house. That is what you, that is how it's going to end up. So at the end of the day, uh, what the Yorubas will say, if, if, if the house of the monarch gets burnt, you only get a more beautiful house at the end of the day. Because of what he represents, politicians will give him, will rebuild that place for him. And it will be a much better structure than what it is today. Mm. So as to the investigation, I don't even think that we're going to that the police will bother to um, unravel, as it were, what happened. I don't think so. The good thing is he, no life was lost in that fire. He mentioned that everybody was able to run away. And even in the media, I have, I have been searching for you know, proof. I mean, we're going to show you pictures of the fire. Um, they're right on your screen. But that's just the mini parlor. How about the rest of the house? I don't know how. People it just, manage to. As I said, it just seems very, very tricky. Mm. But he's come out to say that uh, they couldn't have done that alone. Fulani herdsmen couldn't have done that alone. They did that uh, you know, with the support of his own people and that a house is worth 50 million naira. So you might just have a point, you know, talking about how politicians might be falling over uh, to, to this. But former aviation minister, Fanny Kairi, mentioned that the government needs to be very careful the way they handle this Igboho issue. What do you think about this? There is absolutely no doubt about that. Igboho has a followership. They know him. Politicians know him. There is none of them who doesn't know Igboho. That is the reality of, of, of the matter. He has been an enforcer for a couple of decades. You know. So if somebody has done what he did, there is already a lot of positive sentiments going for him. If he contests an election today in that locality, he will win. That is the, real, that is the extent of the kind of sentiment that he has going for him. So when you have someone like that, you have to be careful of creating uh, an Namde Kanu kind of situation out of, out of him. So Fani Kayode is saying the fact we should be careful how this is handled. And it should be handled with the overall important objective in mind. What is that? The insecurity issues. We want to take away, we want to send away the, the, the criminal uh, uh, invaders from wherever they came from. That should be the overarching guide as to how we will deal with the matter. All right, but if we're saying, let's be careful how we handle this, so we don't turn him into an Enamdi Kalu, or maybe even a Shore, some people could argue that yeah. by maybe arresting him, does that not now seem like a situation where you let someone go scot-free for something that was obviously a crime, invading a Fulani settlement, burning a house, and chasing away people? Even if you, you, you obviously, an arrest uh, order has been issued. And at some point, I believe it will be picked up, you know. Uh, but you see, even when you pick people up, they let them, they, there are ways to handle this thing that it doesn't degenerate. But where you're going to have problems is when you arrest people and you keep them in detention for a prolonged period. So you may have a situation in which followers 
start to demonstrate or may even bombard the, the police station and say, release our guy. So whatever we need to do, it, let's just do it the proper way. If he's arrested, we need to be arraigned him properly and let, him, let, let the matter be brought to a close. What, what do you think the role of uh, Governor Shei Makinde should be at a time like this? He's still the father of the state, uh, no matter what the circumstances are. Maybe uh, he, let th he let things um, out of his grip for a while. But he should not get back on this matter. Incidentally, according to some political analysts, it wasn't as if Shehima Kinde and Igbo were enemies. They've also been friends. Like I said, Igbo is a, is a politician's person. You know. And he's not in that camp, as we speak. So he's on the other camp. I, I remember his comments when Amotekun was coming, which is why I don't believe all this <clears throat> calling him to come ahead, I don't think it's going to happen. Igbo was not uh, favorably disposed to the Amotekun uh, 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 structure or, or its leadership. Maybe as at that time, he wanted more role for himself and, and probably to even control the machinery. And, and it wasn't handed over to him. You know, so he is... He's, on the other side of, 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 of the Amotekun. So, so Mackindeshu, rather than uh, pick enmity with this guy, see how that guy can be used for his own purpose. There's That's also, there's also, and I've seen comments, you know, people calling out certain uh, figureheads in the Southwest um, that you would expect would be able to come in at a time like this and do what is necessary. And of course, uh, Bola Metinibu has been named, but I also want you to speak on those aspects and also the Alafinho for your. Um, who, you know, should be people that, you know, with just a few words, should be able to create peace in their, in their um, uh, communities. Um, what are you expecting from these persons? Uh, Alaf indeed, well, don't also forget that the Barakpa that we're talking about, the Okeogun, is, is on your north. So he's still, in a way, um, his domain, as, as it were. You know, so he's probably close to those incidents. So some people say, oh, Abu Jale did not. I say, what would you want Abu Jale to say? The Abu Jale is dealing with cultism in Jebu, the court clashes on which people are losing their lives. So his own, sec his own immediate security concern is not the, uh, uh, the same as what is going on in Ibarakwa. So expecting that I will use Panadol for your headache is... It, um, it, it's a little bit too, too much. But in the case of uh, uh, Bola, Bola Ahmed Tinobu, people have said he did not say anything. Actually, for me too, I, you know, as uh, he presents himself as a leader uh, in, in this Yoruba, uh, in, in the Southwest. So there are expectations that he will say some comments, even if they are not. Uh, it doesn't have to be aggressive. It doesn't have to be anti-government. They just need to be frank or at least comforting to the people who are hurting. People lost their lives in those places. People lost their livelihood. They lost limb. So words that could be comforting are, are things that I think the expectations are from the people. Um, at the same time, you can be sure that Bola himself knows Igbo. Uh, 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 Tinubu knows Igbo. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Okay, all right. Interesting. Uh, well, the thing was that Sunday yesterday after the fire said he would not relent in fighting for his people. So it seems we're yet to see the end of this matter. But we'll be following the, the story here and bringing you updates on Plus TV Africa. So thank you very much, Mr. Bolaho Olojade, for your Thanks time for on The Breakfast. Me. All right. Uh, hopefully this also doesn't uh, degenerate into, you know, uh, uh, more reprisal attacks and, you know, more crisis. Uh, we hope that it can be properly managed by every single person who uh, should take charge at a time like this. Um, and that's where we wrap up this conversation. Stay with us. We're going to be back right after this short break. And next we're talking about the biggest thing going on in the country right now, and that is the replacement of the service chiefs. Comes up after this break.